It's just that simple. Um, I had another thing and I totally forgot it. So the next thing is throw. This is another disadvantage. So like euphoniums and baritones have these nice big vowels. Look at this. It's like an inch of throw. I mean, for instance, my true bars have like this much throw. It's it's like a centimeter, two centimeters maybe. These have at least an inch of throw. So you have to push that down fast all the way. There's no sluggish valves when you're playing valve instruments. Um, you have to throw that all the way down and get all the way back up, uh, like right here. Missing that G a little bit. You have to make sure you have to get that all the way down, all the way back up in the space of a sixteenth note. So, um, and this is a good thing to remember, valves fast down, valves fast up. You want to mash them down, mash them up. Um, and sometimes springs are a little slow, so they come up a little slow. Um, Yamaha marching baritones, they tend to come up and go just a little bit, which is kind of annoying. Um, but that, I see that as a disadvantage, because I hate trying to play really fast things, and it's like grr, grr, pushing all this down, it tires out my arm. Uh, these euphonium valves are like six inches long, and they weigh like a pound each, so I think that sucks. That's a disadvantage. And then the instrument itself. So on trombone, you can just uh, pick it up, uh, play something really loud, um, assuming you're playing with good sound and whatnot. Uh, focused embouchure, good air, etc. And you can play really loud. It's easy. There's just two bends. There's one at the front, there's one at the back. Maybe you're playing through a valve and there's like a couple more. You know, it's just like 360 degrees. Then you pick up euphonium and you're like, oh my god, there's... and then it goes... and then it goes down here, and then it goes up here, and then around, and then back up. There's like a thousand more degrees of... Uh, bent tubes you have to blow through and like the bore of this is like 590 I can never remember um, whereas my bass drum one is 562 which is a little over half an inch this is 590 so almost uh, six tenths of an inch and actually in back it's like 610 or something I can't remember uh, the bore of the compensating section so this is larger but the bends and just the way it's made which is conical versus uh, cylindrical like trombones means it's totally different blow. So you can't pick it up and just go Brr! You can't play it the same way as trombone. You kind of have to think slower air, even though I don't like really using that term, and like hotter air. Because the sound, you don't want to make it sound like a trombone either. You want to make it sound a little larger, a little fluffier maybe. And I don't know how I sound. I probably don't sound very good. But try not to sound like you do on a trombone. Think of a different sound concept. And if you need sound concept concepts, go to YouTube and there's tons of famous euphonium soloists. Just type in euphonium soloist or something. And they have great sounds. Um, you know, great for euphonium. I don't really like euphonium. I'm just going to put that out there. Don't tell anybody. But um, it's a totally different sound. So don't try and sound like you do on a trombone. And don't play exactly like you do on a trombone. Because it's not going to work. Um, and that brings up another thing, mouthpiece matching. So I use the same mouthpiece that I do on bass trombone, because on euphonium you can use a pretty large mouthpiece and get away with it. Um, they're built so large, especially compensating euphoniums like this, that it doesn't really mess with the sound concept, and they still it still plays pretty well. Nothing's really whack out of tune. Um, but stay away from really huge mouthpieces. And if you play tenor trombone, which most of you probably do, don't use a tenor trombone mouthpiece in euphonium or a baritone, because they're too small. Um, euphonium mouthpieces in general are a little bit deeper, maybe a little more uh, conical, like on a V, instead of uh, like cup-shaped. Um, it's kind of more direct, and they have a little bit larger throat, which is why bass trombone mouthpieces, which are in the same general vein of design, um, work pretty well, but don't use a tenor trombone mouthpiece unless you use something really huge, in which case maybe you shouldn't be using that on trombone. But um, yeah, use something a little bit larger on euphonium. 51D, I don't like it, but that's a good euphonium mouthpiece. Um, I have a uh, Hammond 12XL, which is just the five rim size of like a really deep cup. And that's perfect for euphonium. Um, I use this because I, I can't play on smaller rims anymore. 
And on baritone, play something a little more trombone sized, maybe not quite as deep. Um, my bass drum mouthpiece doesn't play very well in the marching baritone, but I, it's the only thing I can use right now. <clears throat> I used uh, a Hammond 12L when I marched, and um, a Dennis Wick 5BL, which is also really good. The Assistant Blue mouthpieces are really good. Um, something just a little bit deeper than Trombo, but not as deep as Euphony mouthpiece. Works great. Um, okay, so tuning. Uh, trombones are really easy because you just you have this giant tuning slide in your right hand. You can tune anything. You can't do that on Euphonium. And I just went over this uh, a little bit, but uh, even the valve combinations totally change. So, uh, I'll get this out. So the open notes, that's probably a little flat because this is cold. Open notes are generally in tune on the Yamaha Marching Baritone, the F below that is flat. Kind of have to look that up. And they have pretty wide slots, at least on this instrument. So that's pretty in tune. Uh, second valve. That's in tune. Not bad. Uh, that's a little flat. Um, on the Yamaha Marching Baritone, first valve tuning slide's too long. So most first valve notes are a little flat. That's sharp. One and two is sharp on most instruments, uh, no matter what the register. Two and three can be right on. Sometimes it's a little flat, actually, because uh, the third valve is usually tuned a little low. It is on mine right now. I'll play this down because you don't play F with one and three. Uh, one and three is sharp. Yeah, it feels great right now. Um, that's sharp. On this, I get to compensate because I have a first foul tuning slide. It makes it play worse though. And then one, two, and three is really sharp. Um, if you have a tuner, you can tell it's really sharp. It doesn't sound too whack right now. I have to compensate for that. So that's the basic tendencies. Open, opens in tune, in tune, depends on the instrument. Um, Euphonium, that's fine on this, it's flat. Sharp, maybe flat, it's flat on this. Sharp and sharp. So you, you have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all seven positions, all seven valve combinations. Um, and you have alternates, uh, at least one alternate. You can use third valve instead of one and two, but that's usually flat. So you have seven or eight different valve combinations, and they're all out of tune in one way or another. I mean, you have to watch that all the time. That combined with how out of tune the partials are, like on this, um, they go in tune, sharp, flat, in tune, flat, sharp, uh, really flat, in tune, in tune, really flat. I mean, they, that's all the way up to the 12th partial, 13th, 12th. 11th? I can't remember where I stopped. High D, whatever that is. So, when you combine out-of-tune valves with out-of-tune partials, sometimes they're totally in tune, like if you play the third in a B-flat chord, and you play D above the staff on this, it's perfect. It's like 14 cents flat, exactly what you need. But if you play high F, and you're playing in F, it's going to be, you know, like 10 cents sharp, and you want to be exactly in tune, so you have to blow lower. There's no other option there. And like uh, C right below that, uh, D, middle C with first valve, or third position middle C, that's what it would be, is like 30 cents flat, so you can't use that as anything except for like third and an A flat major chord. So you basically have to learn your tuning tendencies, learn the uh, tendencies of the partials, and then compensate for them with your face or with slides, whatever you have available to you. So hopefully, trombonists, that helps you out as future valve instrument players. I'll see you next time.